If you've ever got a paperback from your instructor with a CS on it, you have a comma splice. Comma splices are one of the most common errors in student writing, and in this tutorial I'm going to show you how to recognize comma splices and four easy ways to repair them. First, let's just remember the checklist for a complete sentence. Remember that a complete sentence has a verb, it has a subject, and it has a sense of grammatical completeness. The problem with the comma splice is that it's one sentence that is fused to another sentence using a comma. And a comma itself isn't enough to separate two big ideas or two sentences. Remember the job of a comma actually is to create a boundary, to make a break, not to hook things together. And a comma by itself can't break up two sentences. So if we look at this comma splice, we see great white sharks are predators. We have the verb are, we have the subject sharks, and we can make this statement, great white sharks are predators, and it, it has a sense of grammatical completeness. It could stand by itself. On the other side of the comma, we have they hunt seals, sea lions, and small whales. So hunt is the verb, they is the subject, and I could make this statement, they hunt sea, seal, sea lions, and small whales, and not leave my reader hanging. So we do, in fact, have a comma splice. Two sentences on either side, one on either side of this comma. There are four easy ways to fix comma splices. The first is to replace the comma with a semicolon. The semicolon is a much stronger punctuation mark. It's strong enough to set that boundary between the two sentences. Writers choose this option when they like the way their sentence sounds. They like the structure of the sentence. They don't want to change it. So they simply replace that semicolon, excuse me, that comma with a semicolon. The second easy fix is to simply make two separate sentences out of the one comma splice. So with our example here, all I need to do is to change that comma to a period and capitalize they. Now I have the two sentences that make sense and are grammatically correct. A third option for repairing a comma splice is to add a coordinating conjunction and use it along with the comma. You might have learned the coordinating conjunctions as fanboys. That's the acronym for the first letter of each of them for, and, nor, but, or, yet, and so. One way to fix a comma splice is to simply add one of those coordinating conjunctions because that makes a more substantial break between the two big ideas. Great white sharks are predators. I can add and here, and that makes the sentence grammatically correct because I've separated those major ideas using both a coordinating conjunction and a comma. The last strategy for repairing a comma splice is to make one of those two sentences in the splice into a dependent clause so it can't stand by itself and then is no longer a sentence. I'm going to choose to make the second part of this comma splice into a dependent clause just by replacing they with that because I can't say to someone, I can't make the statement that hunt seals, sea lions, and small whales, that leaves the reader wanting more information. It leaves the reader hanging. So it's actually a dependent clause now, and that will work with the independent clause. By the way, we no longer need that comma because the dependent clause comes at the end of the sentence here. So to review, a comma splice is two sentences spliced together with just a comma, and there are four ways to repair them. You can replace the comma with a semicolon, you can make separate sentences, you can use a coordinating conjunction, and you can make one sentence into a dependent clause.